Hello and Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to Backstage Buzz at the Mac, where you get the inside story on the art scene. I'm Diana Martinez, and I'm excited to kick the year off with a great lineup of guests. Later, Janie Sarther will preview the films coming to this year's Global Flicks International Film Series. Then, maestro Kirk Muspratt will tell us all about New Philharmonic's upcoming production of The Merry Widow. But first, I am so pleased to welcome Janie Oldfield and Karen Kuhn to the show. They're here to give us a scoop on the exciting event coming soon for the Love of Frida Gala that will be coming up in February. Welcome, Karen and Janie. Thank right. you. Thanks. So that didn't sound excited at all. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the gala. Well, tell us Valentine's about the gala. Day. You yeah. can't beat it. It's so why wouldn't it be called for the Love of Frida? There you go. There and you it, go. it really is a wonderful marriage between cuisine and appreciating Frida's art because Chef Rick Bayless is going to be with us. Mm -hmm. And he is putting together a menu that all is based on things that Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera actually served or enjoyed when they were living in Mexico City in Casa Azul. So we're going to have um, an expert give us a real culinary treat. Great. Um, music, yeah. silent auction, live auction. Karen, what are some of the prizes in the silent auction? Um, silent auction is sort of an array of um, the sort of typical wine package as well as things for kids, some hotel stays and uh, museum um, packages. And then there's some probably some unique opportunities that are still in development, but really are, offer a great opportunity for all those involved to participate in some way. So there's a trip to Mexico, I understand. And where are the other trips that you have that are in this? There's a trip to Mexico, there's a trip to Vail um, for a ski weekend or maybe a summer adventure, um, New Mexico, Ooh, and, Santa Fe. And, and to so For the art lovers. <laughs> nice. And some really great golf packages um, to Kohler and uh, oh, Chicago Kohler's Golf. Beautiful. I've been to Kohler. Yeah, that is so quite a place. I think we have something for everyone, for sure. Definitely. So in terms of the gala, who's helping to plan this event? We have a wonderful group of community volunteers chaired by Marcy and Mark Peterson, mm -hmm. and we are so grateful for their support, but they have brought to the table lots of new friends for the MAC and the Foundation. Yes, they have. And several Foundation board members and enthusiasts are involved as well. It's really a dynamic group of people who are pretty darn skilled at putting together a party and are passionate about the fact that this will feed the Frida Kahlo Fund mm -hmm. and help us to make the exhibition as excellent as it can, but at the same time, give us a Valentine's Day to remember. That's right. You know, where is the party going to be? The gala is going to be at the Esplanade Lakes in Downers Grove, and we're really excited um, to host over 400 people, and we've already sold 196 tickets, and invitations go out January 1. So um, there's lots of buzz already created about the gala, and so I would say get your tickets as soon as you can um, by contacting the MAC box office. You know, one thing that's nice about Esplanade Lakes is there's a hotel, correct, attached to? Correct. So you could make this a weekend if you'd like. A or weekend getaway with the double tree and there's Valentine's, packages. little yeah, romance, absolutely. little party, <laughs> little fundraising, all for a good cause. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you'll have valet which is nice because right. of the weather. So if it's right. cold, it's okay. There's valet parking. You can just get dropped off right at the door. Yes, valet, cocktail reception, uh, full dinner, entertainment, and silent and live auctions. So That's so fun. It'll be super fun. You know, um, I know that the committee um, has a lot of new people that Mark and Marcy brought to the table. And a lot of them are friends from Metropolitan Family Services, but I know a lot of people are doing this because of Alan. Alan Peterson, who is yep. um, the gentleman who truly inspired this whole crazy event. Right. Um, and, and Mark and Marcy, I just want to add, are Alan, Alan's son and daughter-in-law. Correct. Yes. Yep. So how many people would you say are on this committee? There are oh, 22. 20. 22 people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, a, it's amazing the support we've gotten from that group who's doing the gala, then you have a host committee of how many people that are supporting? 24. 24 couples yep. have come forward to say, 
we're here to help. We're here to help. We're and sponsor into this. and share and spread yes. the word. And if people want to buy a table, let's say they want to make this a Valentine's Day party, is there a deal for them at all, or is it just is it what's about the cost to buy a table? About um, three thousand. Just, just under three thousand. So it's actually more economical for um, people to buy a table. Okay. And that's what we're really encouraging because this is a party um, for for Frida and to have a great time. Mm -hmm. And so gather your friends together, enjoy it together, yeah. and um, let's have a great a great night. So all the proceeds, we should make this clear, because people might say, wow, $300 a ticket, that's a lot. However, a big portion of this is donated. Correct. And this is all going toward the Frida Kahlo Gala. Exhibition. Uh, exhibition. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all the proceeds are really going to help support the exhibition, to bring it to the community. You know, when the exhibition came, and, and you know this better sure. than anyone, Diana, that we're not here to um, make money, to make money um, but we do have to cover our cost. And mm -hmm. so this exhibition will help bring it, um, bring, um, bring Frida to the, the college um, at, at no cost, you know, to the taxpayers there. You know, could you want to, let's talk about some of the amazing sponsors that have come forward sure. to help with this. So we start out with Bank of America, who's our title sponsor. Right. Ball Horticulture. They're amazing. Amazing. Um, and They're doing the garden. Yes. It'll be so fun. Um, White and Company. He's doing the fo photo exhibit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Nycor Gas. Just um, signed on. Just signed on. So exciting. Yep. Um, the DuPage Foundation um, and Arts DuPage together. They're going to do Frida's birthday. So right. So came to Frida Fest, now we're going to have Frida's, Frida's birthday, birthday thanks to the DuPage Foundation. Yep. And then we've got some great partners with the DCEO and... Mm -hmm. um, NEA has come forward. Correct. It's it's just so exciting. And, you, and Ecolab, I think? Ecolab gave us a grant for the children's area. That's so nice. Yeah. So nice. Who else are we missing, Janie, that you can think of? Well, I was thinking about with the gala, there are some individuals sponsoring the gala, and we are so grateful to all of them, too. Um, people that were inspired by the Peterson family to step up, and so they have really helped us to get to our goal for the gala. So, so nice. it's pretty wonderful. So nice. Yeah. You know, one thing um, that I think is important that everybody knows, we just started selling tickets. And I don't even know if I've shared this with you. We have people from seven different countries who have bought yeah. tickets, 35 different states. So the tourism and the economic impact that we've been hoping this will have is coming true. So it's a good thing not just for those coming to the gala or coming to the exhibition, it's good for the community. Absolutely. I want to thank you both for what you're doing because the raising the money is the hard part. <laughs> And you guys have been it's doing been a fun. great job, and we're still looking for a few more. Yep, a few absolutely. More. Yep. There's always an opportunity. So. There is. There's always an opportunity. <laughs> and if not, we will make you one. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to share? I just think the one thing that I didn't say when we started to talk is, and, and as you said, $300, $325 a ticket feels steep. Right. But... We're going to be in the room with Chef Rick Bayless, and he's going to visit every table. Mm -hmm. Every guest will have an opportunity to chat with him. And he really is, for Chicago, with his Frontier Grill and Tapla Bombo, he really is it in terms of a real opportunity to have the real thing. So Absolutely. He will, um, he will not be remote. He will be commenting on all the food. <laughs> and it's a great opportunity to say, I had a date with Rick Bayless on Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, I like there it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I had a date with Rick Bayless on Valentine's Day. We're not stretching the truth. <laughs> no. no. There you go. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. today. Don't miss out on the opportunity to experience this one-of-a-kind event, a date with Rick Bayless on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Tickets for the love of Frida can be purchased online at frida.givesmart.com or by calling the Mac box office at 630-942-4000. Janie Sarther is the Mac's Education and Community Engagement Coordinator, and every year she helps organize free global flicks. She's here to share more about the incredible international films coming to the series this year. Welcome, Janie. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you. So tell us about these movies. 
every year. It's a different set. You think, how can we outdo how well it was received last year? And every year, with the help of the faculty and the global ed department here at COD, we just find new worlds and new stories to share. Well, and it always seems like there's too many. And then it's down to like, no, I want this one. Yes, and I want all documentaries. Like, give me the documentaries. I want the truth. And I want all of the, <laughs> like, the blockbusters. Love stories. Uh -huh. Yeah, you want to laugh and cry. Uh -huh. I want information. You want information. So that's a good news, though. There's a lot of perspective to make this balanced. So I think the best part about them is they are free. Free. And I think that's one of the nicest things we do in the winter when it's February, February and March this year. Yes. And the colder the weather, the better the attendance. Isn't Everybody that funny? wants to get out. I because think so. It, and get out for a reason. And it's a chance not just to see a film, but it's a chance to have a conversation. Following each film, we have faculty, staff that stay in their experts, either on that country or that culture or that situation, mm -hmm. and they help facilitate a dialogue. With the audience. Yes. And that's what I think is, is unique about, it, it's, a, it's a conversation with the audience and with each other. Yes. And I think that's what makes them so attractive to people, don't you? I agree. And I'm the type of person that I don't want to ask the question, but I want to hear the answer. Ah. And it's a really great time to better understand what happened in a film. Or maybe something didn't quite click and you didn't understand what that was. Right. And it really takes that film experience to the next level of understanding. So this year, we have Frida, which I'm going to say is going to be one of my favorites. Uh, Sky and Ground, Z, Two Days, One Night, Virunga, and Shoplifters. What's your favorite? I'm most ex uh, excited for Sky and Ground. Okay, tell us about that one. Documentary, a family that is in Aleppo, Syria, has mm -hmm. been bombed out of their home. Mm -hmm. They are forced, and they make their way to the Greek-Macedonian border and are stuck. They have relatives in Berlin that they can stay in touch with through phone. And they say, if you can get here, we can help you get asylum. So they start walking. Oh. Three generations. Some of the filming is their own, using their own phones. And they document by foot their travels to get to, to a new home. Well, and right now, how, how much more timely could it be? This is from 2018. This is current story. This is real life. Well, and it's probably happening right now and, as you're watching the movie, too. And the family is endearing. It's not all doom. It's really an uplifting story of what we can achieve and what we can right. do. Right. So, okay, so we have a documentary. And we have Frida, which is kind of like a biography, fic historical fiction. Yes, and it's a story you can hear over and over again because her life is so layered. It is. There's so many stories about her life that are so intriguing. And the film does this really unique thing where they recreate the painting in the film. So one of the paintings we have in our exhibit is the broken column. And right. that is created in the film. And that's the neatest thing to see this film and art come to life. Well, what I love about this movie is one, Salma Hayek stars in it. Two, um, the director, Julie Taymor, is brilliant. She's creative, she's artistic, she did The Lion King. And three, it's based on the most cited um, biography of Frida, Hayden Herrera. So if you want to see a movie on Frida, and that's why I think I was strongly wanting us to do this one, if you watch that, you, you're going to get a good, accurate picture of her life. Yes. And it's very absorbable. Yes. It's, it's not high or level. No. It's real. It's a story. It's yeah, intriguing. Yeah, it's passionate, romantic, fight, sad. It's all of it. Yes. And it's creative and artistic and artsy. It's a, it's, it's, some people might say it's too artsy, but I love it. Let's talk about Two Days, One Night. The cliffhanger with a cliffhanger with a cliffhanger. And I don't want to say anything about those cliffhangers. It's a fictionalized story, but I'm sure there's some truth behind the situation. Mm -hmm. A woman's about to be fired. So if everybody agrees to let her go, they all get a bonus. So she has two days and one night to convince everybody that she needs her job and they can't get their bonus. Could you imagine? I hope they'd vote for me. <laughs> and and it's a, it, there's multiple votes and then as it resolves, there's other cliffhangers. It's, it's, you it's hope they vote for you? No, if, if it was me, if it was real life, I want them to vote for me. I don't want them to get a bonus, right? Oh. I want my job. Right, 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 right. That's what it's about. She's got to keep her job. That's kind of a, oh, that's a tricky one. Interesting. Um, 
Z is a classic. Classic from 1969, I believe, mm -hmm. but it's a thinly veiled truth about politics in Greece. Okay. But it is the first film in the Oscars that was nominated for both film, best film, as well as best foreign language. It won the best foreign language. It was also up for Cannes. It was also up for Golden Globes. So it was one of the first films that really was in all the top tier categories of award making. Okay, so we've hit Greece, we've hit Syria, we've hit Mexico, you we've forgot. hit, um, let's see, we what is two nights and one day? Two days, one night, I'm, France. So now we have Virunga. The Congo. Africa. Africa. A beautiful story about how we are protecting animals and those that are protecting the animals have to also protect the land. Mm -hmm. And they become soldiers to protect the land to keep the animals safe. Their intent is to help the animals, but another documentary that's more about how do we protect the lands to keep the animals safe. Nice. And I bet it has beautiful cinematography of the animals and the apes and yes. the jungle. And, and one of the producers is Leonardo DiCaprio. No way. Passionate about it and put his money for it to help the project. How nice is that? Mm -hmm. The last one is shoplifters. That's an interesting one I thought. It's about a family who are shoplifters who take an orphan in. Well, yeah, they're shopping more than just food. They're shoplifting people. But to help, this, the, the purpose and their intent is different than what it looks like on paper. Right. Well, I don't think they stole the child out of malice. I think they were trying to help the child. Yes. That's, a, that's kind of a sad, sweet, that, that's sad. That's your film. That's my film. Yes. Right, there's my film, right? There's my <laughs> sad and dramatic, and, yes. and that's Japanese. And these all have subtitles. Yes and a conversation following, and they're free. And if people want more information, they can go to the website. Yes, at themac.org. Do you have popcorn? Yes. Soda? Plenty. Awesome, what else do we need to know? Come twice a day, you can come at 1.30 and 7.30. Perfect. Not just one film a day. And it, it shows? Only on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, Wednesdays mid-February through mid-March. And our best suggestion is to park in the PE parking lot. Come Thank in through you. our back doors. Very good. Janie, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Come visit the MAC for Global Flicks on Wednesdays in February and March. Admission is free. And there are two showtimes available, 1.30 and 7.30. Visit at themac.org for the schedule. Come visit the MAC this February. On February 6th and 9th, the best of London's award-winning stars will be broadcast directly from the stage to the MAC's big screen in the musical Kinky Boots. Hot Club of Cowtown returns on February 7th to celebrate their 21st anniversary. Hit Play Ballerinas will take the stage on February 8th. Experience the best of Second City on February 15th, a perfect date night to share with your Valentine. For tickets or more information, visit at themac.org or call the box office at 630-942-4000. Maestro Kirk Muspratt is back to tell us about the new Philharmonic's The Merry Widow. Welcome, Kirk. Thanks, Diana. So tell us, um, tell us what the story is about, because a lot of people might not know the story. It's so complicated, uh -oh. so bear with me. No, it's an but operetta. It's a, but it's a comedy. It's a comedy, yeah. So, you know, you're in a little made-up country, a Balkan country named Pontevedrio, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a king. He has a son named Danilo, Prince Danilo. There's a very nice farm girl named Hanna, and they meet in the fields and fall in love and hug and kiss. The king finds out that his prince, prince son is kissing this farm girl and ships him off to Paris. So she's sitting there going to the meadow going, oh, I get it. The prince, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. So he goes to Paris. He's heartbroken. But by the way, he's a young prince in Paris. And there are places like Maxime's and Dancing Girls. She, meanwhile, gets tired of sitting around and marries the richest man Perfect. in all Revenge. of Pontevedrio. Right. He is 95. She's 23. Oh, jeez. And right after the wedding night, he dies of a heart attack. Perfect. And he, yes, exactly. <laughs> and he's 20 times richer than Bill Gates. Okay? He owns half the country. So they thought they were going to get his money, the state. And now Hannah has the money. And she goes, you know what? I think I'm going to go to Paris and see this boy now. So 
at the Pontevedra, I'll just finish, the, the Pontevedrian embassy, they're saying, Danilo, you have to marry this woman right now. And she's like, wait a minute. You dumped me and left me in the field. Yeah, and now your country's going broke and you left me in the... Uh, he didn't really, his, the father just right. like, shipped them off one night with the guards. And they're both sort of, you know, so it's a comedy of errors. So to find out how it ends, you have to see the show. Yeah, and it's all happy at the end. They all kiss and everybody... You just gave it away. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. I shouldn't have, well, it's, you know, it's an operetta, so it has to be. Yeah, it has to be. And how many people in the orchestra? About 40. About 40? Yeah. And how many people in the cast? Oh, 24 maybe, including so it's a, the chorus. It's a nice size. Oh, yeah. Nice it's size. all couples that are all mixed up and the Sam Brioche is with the casket, his wife, and the blah, blah, blah. It's all flirtatious. And mm -hmm. people get, there's a fan that goes to the wrong person's, you know, you know all this stuff. You know, I love really the funny. opera stories. They're always so com complex. Yeah, and this is what's great is it's because it's operetta. It's piece, then spoken dialogue and action, mm -hmm. like a Broadway show. Nice. You know, yeah, because it's operetta. So there's lots of room for comedy and different accents. Either you're too French or you're cascada or, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's hilarious. It's really hilarious. It's my favorite operetta. So if, if they go to France, I, I bet the costumes will be beautiful. <gasps> Oh, Kim has showed us, I mean, in our production meeting, you should have seen the beautiful costume. She said it. We all decided to set it in the 20s, 1920s. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, you know, roaring 20s. The flappers. The flappers. Right? And she, as she says, everybody's going to be decked out in jewels and all this, you know, like crazy. And then at the end, we end up at the Moulin Rouge. Fine. So there's more Can -can. feathers. Can, and there's Can Can music and Can Can girls. Beautiful. You know, all of them know Danny Lowe. So the Can Can, so you've got some French music, I assume. Oh, French yeah. French sounding music. Yeah, yeah. And Maurice Trevelyan, does he have something to do with this? Yes, he does. Actually, there's a famous movie made in 1934 with Jeanette MacDonald mm -hmm. and Mor uh, Maurice Chevalier. And they're the two couples. It's a black and white film. And it's just so gorgeous because he's so charming. And of course, she's got a great voice. She's got that beautiful Jeanette McDonald voice. And so there, this black and white film that you're talking about yeah. is? The Merry Widow. It is the Merry Widow. Yeah, oh, there's there, several actually films made of the Merry Widow that, I mean, after this production came out. This is the first one made in 34 by Lubish. Okay. Yeah, and it's, uh, and so, but there are so others. So this is based on a film? No. The no. films were based on the <clears throat> opera. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So the operetta came out. It was That's really, what I thought. I'm like, isn't this old, 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 old? Um, this was written in 1905. So old. Yeah, yeah, old, yeah. Not old, old, Right old. after the turn of the century. So another 20 years later they made the film when they had the technology. And the film is, you know, it's one of those enormous set stages with mm -hmm. 40 people dancing in gowns and... Pretty. Oh, it's gorgeous, yeah. And, and then, you said this is your favorite? Oh, it's my favorite because it is so funny. It is absolutely hilarious and the music is, oh, just to die for. I mean, even the ba 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 even the can-can music is cool. You know, of course, can can And there's beautiful romantic music in the middle when they're struggling with each other. The Velia song, for instance. So are you in rehearsal right now? No. We haven't won't started start yet? The day after New Year. Day after New Year's. Yeah, and we'll just work with the cast and do the staging and do all that stuff. But we're well ahead with everything. I mean, the set's going to be terrific. And, you know, um, the lighting, the, we're all talking about what kind of, you know, tones we want to use and how we want to light things and, you know... We started with costumes, which is really great, because Kim, Kim's fantastic. She is fantastic. Yeah, she's We're fantastic. talking about Kimberly Morris, who's yeah. a costume designer, yeah. and, and she's really a wonderful, wonderful talent. Um, and and I, love, I love her um, ability to do such uh, diverse things. She can make a stage head, like, and, and make prosthetics, and yeah. make you beautiful, and do yeah. a period. She's really great. Yeah. She's really great. And so much knowledge and attention to detail. Like, she's talking about what kind of beads they should have, but you have to be careful because they're going to be dancing at a certain point. Right. And blah, 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 you know, and these jewel tones won't read with, you know, um, Elias's idea about lighting that color of the mm -hmm. set with the bronze on the set. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's amazing to watch it. I mean, I love, I love that these people are so good at what they do. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. Everybody brings their piece to the table. Yeah. Um, 
What should people know about this show? It's in, it's sung in what language? English. English. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and we'll no have subtitles. English super titles too, just so that you know that if you 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 know you don't hear so well or the orchestra's a little too loud or they turn a little bit, you know, so because all the comedy, you know, you know, you have to understand every yeah, word. Yeah, it's right? pretty. It's pretty normal. It's in English and it's great. And Michael, our stage director, has basically rewritten all of the dialogue so that it makes it sense in the twenties and in that opulent mm. roaring 20s time and yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And who is starring in it? Oh, well, the two big stars are, um, uh, you know, Prince Danny Lowe is Jesse Donner, who has sung with us, and he's about six foot five, okay? And Elisa Jordheim, who has sung with us, her nickname, by the way, is Peanut, okay, we call her Peanut. She is four foot 11. Okay, and she's singing Hannah. So right away, Michael has comedy to deal with right there because probably Jesse could just, you know, pick her up if he wanted to give her... Put, a, put her and, in his pocket. Yeah, exactly. Cute. And they're fantastic voices. I mean, these people, you know, Elise has just been at the Paris Opera. Jesse just sang this role at the Florida Opera. So they're terrific. So we're all good. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a blast. Well, thank you for coming on. That's all thank the time you. we have. Don't miss out on your chance to see The Merry Widow January 24th through the 26th. For tickets or more information, please visit at themac.org or call the box office at 630-942-4000. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the theater and next time on Backstage Buzz.